Welcome to Downshift, my name is Matt and this is the Chevrolet Silverado ZR2 Bison, making it the most off-road capable Silverado that you can buy. And I know all of your minds will initially go to the Ford Raptor as its main competitor, but this is actually more oriented towards tighter trails, forest roads, and more of the off-roading that you would do here in Wisconsin. It's more about rock crawling and more technical stuff and off-roading that requires a little bit more finesse and skill. But regardless of that, we'll talk about that throughout the video what we're going to do today is go through all of the coolest things that you get on your $85,000 ZR2 Bison. Let's get into it. The first thing that we're going to talk about is the Bison package. Technically this is a Silverado ZR2 with the Bison package and it's the Bison package from AEV otherwise known as American Expeditionary Vehicles. And basically what you're getting here is something completely off-road, overland ready with full protection right out of the box. So what you get with your $8,000 package is a revised steel front bumper. You can see there, you've got revised recovery hooks. They're no longer red, they're no longer dangling. They're a lot more beefy here. You do have AEV stamped in right there. You also have some beefed up skid plates for your engine, transmission, oil cooler, differentials, and all that sort of stuff. You come around to the side and you do have uh, upgraded 18 inch AEV wheels. They're not beadlock, but they still look pretty cool. You do get rock rails down your side. On the interior, you get things like floor mats, as well as some interior branding. You get a bed sticker here and you do get a steel rear bumper as well. Again, with subtle AEV branding. Again, revised uh, rear hooks as well. And just to top it off, of course, you get a little Bison logo on your tailgate. And while we're back here, I wanna talk about the rear bumper a little bit more in depth. Now on a normal Silverado rear bumper, and even the ZR2, you have a cutout here to put your foot. So when you drop the tailgate, you can grab the handle that comes out of the tailgate and get in more easily. You can see that with the steel rear bumper, that is removed. Of course, you can still step there. You got the multi-flex tailgate, which will fold down. And we'll talk about that more. But the weird thing is you do have a step in your front bumper. Why would you need it in your front bumper? And also interesting detail about your front bumper, you do have AEV in the center license plate area. Now in Wisconsin, you have to have a front plate on, or at least that's what the law says. So if you have that covering that up, you still have some backup branding. So AEV still gets the clout. And like I said, this thing is totally off-road ready from the factory. Of course, you have four x four as standard. You have a low range transfer case to amplify your gear ratio for crawling. Again, this is more rock crawling oriented than high speed dune running like the Raptor. You do have skid plates front and rear and all underneath. You've got rock rails and all the protection that we talked about. And on the interior, you have a bunch of cool features as well. Again, some of this stuff is unique to the ZR2. You have front and rear locking diffs and hill descent control, along with a number of different cameras and other stuff we'll talk about later. Oh, and let's not forget the 33 inch Goodyear Wrangler mud terrain tires wrapped around your upgraded AEV wheels. Max grip in all conditions. And then we get to the party piece, which is the engine. It's GM 6.2 liter naturally aspirated V8. And that is the big story as opposed to something like the Raptor, which of course you can get the Raptor R, but that's gonna be big, big money. So this versus the Raptor and even the Tundra TRD Pro, this is a V8 versus the twin turbo V6s that you get there. 420 horsepower, 460 pound feet of torque. So still less powerful than either of those two that I just mentioned, but it's nice to have some V8 grumble. If you are worried about it, you're gonna get about 15 MPG combined according to the EPA. We've been not really even achieving that in mixed conditions, but you know, whatever. But there is a fun Easter egg down here. If you are gonna have anyone work on your engine, make sure that they're an award-winning mechanic. Now we're gonna talk about suspension. Now the ZR2 and the Bison both get an extra two inches of lift from the normal Silverado. And of course, they come with what we're come to expect, the Multimatic DSSV dampers, and these are a fantastic set of shocks and springs. They add a little bit more wheel travel for more articulation off-roading. They also have a little bit more travel for on-road comfort. And these are also, importantly, the same shocks used on military vehicles. General Motors has a contract with the US military, and the GM defense vehicles get these Multimatic shocks. So you are rolling around on military grade suspension, which is pretty cool. 
And then there's the angles, and this is a lot of numbers. You do have a revised front bumper to maximize your approach angle, which comes in at about 32.5 degrees. And then down the center, we've got 11.2 inches of clearance, which is a little bit less than the Raptor, but still should be okay. And you do have protection from those rock rails if anything should go haywire. And then they've rerouted the exhaust to be more tucked up underneath the bumper to improve your departure angle to 23.4 degrees. Let's take a look at that exhaust because it is kind of interesting. Look at that. And this is a Chevy, so how could we not talk about the bow ties? But the first one we're gonna talk about is up front. You can see it's hollow, so it's not a bow tie, but Chevy calls it a flow tie. Of course, it's hollow, so you can feed more air into the engine. This is exactly what Ram does with their TRX. The Ram letters up front are hollow to feed more air into the big V8 to cool it. And then you have these subtle little bow ties on your headlights. Now it's in the amber, and this is the closest thing you're gonna get to a gold bow tie on the outside of this thing, because all of the rest of the bow ties will come to the back, nothing on the side, we'll come to the back and we can see that it's black. Well then of course there's probably a gold bow tie in the interior. No, on your steering wheel it's still black as well. So the only place that you get a gold bow tie is right there. And maybe it's just me, but the vent tabs also look like bow ties to me. That is interesting. I don't know if that's on purpose or if I'm just seeing things. And what's this up here? This is your shark fin for like your radio antenna and stuff. Now on most vehicles, it's centered and in the back. So it would be right about here. But on basically all GM vehicles, it is offset right above the driver's head and in the front. Almost looks like a little mini mohawk. And this was a cool thing. You go into settings, you go into vehicle, and then you have teen driver. So you can select teen driver and you can set a custom key, which will only allow the truck to get to certain speeds. You can't exceed certain speeds and you can set other restrictions to make sure that your kid is driving around in a safe fashion. And in that same vein, you have this buckle to drive. And obviously, if you could imagine, it basically won't let you shift out of park unless your seat belts are buckled. Of course, there's sensors in each of the seats to make sure that if there's somebody in them, they have to be buckled. And I thought this was kind of interesting. Of course, when your screen's on, you have this home button right here, but you also have a hard home button right next to your volume selector. And this is still a truck, which means you can still tow and haul stuff. You go into your trailering menu, you have a shortcut for it right here. And of course you can set each individual trailer. You can also import them from your My Chevrolet app. You can set things like weight, length, uh, brake, and that sort of thing. But I thought this was really polite. It's not secondary trailer. It's not miscellaneous trailer. It is your guest trailer. And how could we not talk about this face? Of course, the ZR2 gets a more aggressive grill than a conventional Silverado. We talked about the flow tie that's hollow up there, but of course, full gloss black grill here. And not only that, but your running lights and projectors are pretty cool. This fang here is your running lights. Very bright, even in midday sun like we have today when it's on. But when you turn your projectors on, your full headlights, you also have this LED tab that lights up and it's got these little line details. I'm not really sure what those are for, but I guess it's kind of nice. And then down below, we talked about the steel bumper from AEV, but you also have LED ditch lights, or I guess you could consider them fog lights. So nice, imposing, and aggressive front face. But what's more aggressive, this, the TRX, or the Raptor? Leave it down in the comments. And now we're in the back talking tailgate, and there's a lot to talk about. Now, this being the Chevrolet, it's called the multi-flex tailgate. On the GMCs, it's the multi-pro tailgate because this isn't professional grade. I, don't, I wouldn't call it amateur grade, but it's not professional. But you also have, what, you, what that means with your multi-flex tailgate is you have these two buttons. Now, which one do you think opens the top? Now, most naturally, you would say the top, but if you weren't sure, you have this little cutout here that is also the exact shape of the upper portion of the tailgate. And also, you see how this bit is black here? On a normal ZR2, that's still body color, so that would still be red, but the Bison blacks it out. So again, you click this here. It's not really powered, you kinda have to pull it down, but then you can open it up. So if you've got longer stuff in the bed, you can put it there. It doesn't really lock in any particular way, but you can then drop the tailgate. Again, it's damped really nice, got little uh, cup holders there and you again you still have the little uh, grab handle to get in even though you're missing those steps but if you do need some help getting in you fidget underneath 
and then you can drop the multi-flex tailgate and then you can step in real easy. So that is pretty nice. Now, there are some rules though. So you cannot drive with this thing down. Again, it doesn't lock. So you hit a bump or a rock and then it's gonna come flopping around. And if you're over 375 pounds, you're gonna be fat shamed by this truck. But ugh, with it all the way closed, again, we have some branding here, but then this is weird. There's a little hole here. I don't remember seeing this in any of the other trucks. Weird. That's a lot of tailgate stuff. Let's move on. We're moving on to the bed. Now all ZR2 Bisons come in this quad cab or crew cab or whatever Chevy calls it with the five and a half foot bed. And it's got the bed liner in here and you can see it says ZR2 all the way back there. Payload is about 1,440 pounds. And then you still have a single little outlet here which is pretty nice. You've got LED lights in here. And of course you can see that we've got a hard tonneau cover, which is a dealer installed option. And since we talk payload, naturally we'll talk towing. 8,800 pounds of max towing on your Silverado ZR2 Bison. And then I'm gonna talk about paint really quickly. Now it's red hot. That's the name of the paint color, but it's more interesting than that. Of course, on your upper portion here, you've got normal gloss paint. It looks very nice, very loud. But down here, you can see that it's almost got, it looks like orange peel, but this is actually a different type of paint. This is like a more durable paint. So if you get rock chips, if you get damage on the trails, it's not really gonna damage your paint as much. It'll deflect more stuff. Maybe Porsche should try this on the fenders of their 911 turbos. And speaking of red, I wanna talk about this badge. Now it's the ZR2 badge and the ZR2 color is red. Now it does blend in with this red hot paint. So I might spec a different color of paint. Another reason that I would spec a different color of paint is that there's construction all around my house right now. And the construction trucks are either white or they're red. So I don't know, is, is, is having a red truck, like does it scream contractor? Leave it down in the comments. But then stepping inside, according to the window sticker, the interior is jet black, but you can see that really just this bit is black. A lot of this is actually kind of a gray and it's like a synthetic leather, but it's almost kind of a vinyl as well. It's got a nice, interesting pattern, but the thought behind it is this is all washable. I wouldn't take a garden hose to it. It's not completely waterproof, but it is all meant to be more durable and washable. So when you're bringing mud in from the exterior, when you're on the trails, you can wash it down. The interesting thing though is on all ZR2s, the interior contrasting color is yellow. So you've got red for your front fender badge for your exterior color, and then the interior color is yellow. Does that feel a little, little McDonald's-esque to anyone? And the next thing we're talking about is screens. Now you have a 12.3 inch digital instrument cluster. It looks great. It's a bit of customizability, but not, not totally but it is still pretty nice. Uh, the weird thing is that you don't really get a bison graphic on startup. You have bison in the headrest, but on the startup, it is just ZR2, which I guess makes sense as this is a ZR2 with a bison package, at least according to the window sticker. But from there, you have a huge head up display, which you can adjust position and you can adjust the information on it. I hope it's coming through, but it's pretty cool. But then from there, we look at your center screen. Now this is a 15 inch screen, which is upgraded from the 13.4 inch that you get standard. And here you get things like wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, you get Google built in. So you have things like your Google Assistant, you've got Play Store and you've got Google Maps built in, Podcast, you've got Alexa in here. You've got a lot of really cool stuff. And you get really good 360 cameras and more specific ones for towing or trail running. And as we look up, we can see that not only do we not have a panoramic roof, we don't have a sunroof at all on this thing. And as tested, this thing is $85,000. And at that price, I kind of thought that it would come with at least a sunroof. And then look at these door cards. They're dimpled. There's actually a lot of textures going on. This is more of a pattern than a texture, but still dimpled, almost like a golf ball. And then of course you've got your yellow accent stitching for your ZR2. But yeah, it's here, it's on the interior of the seat bolster, it's on your center console, it's on your, it's on your glove box, it's everywhere. But then talking about the steering wheel, it's a nice size, it's a nice shape, I like the leather wrapping, it feels good. You've also got heated steering wheel, which is quite nice. But if you're not used to driving a GM product, you have six buttons on the back of your steering wheel. Of course, you've got 
things to control your 10 speed automatic transmission, shift up, shift down, but you've also got these buttons, which is like a next track. And then on the other side, it's volume. So again, if you're not used to it, or if you forget which side, you might accidentally skip the song at the best part when you're trying to turn it up. And a lot of people had headlight opinions about the Colorado. Now remember, the Colorado moved the headlight controls into the center screen, but on the Big Brother Silverado, they're still down here, just a touch away. And then the seats themselves. We talked about this a little bit before. They're two-tone with the contrasted yellow stitching, and they've got AEV embroidered into the headrest. In the normal ZR2, there's just nothing up here, so it's nice to see a little bit of flair there. But they're also heated and cooled. And what I like about these GM trucks is the fact that you can get just a heated back or a heated back and bum. Kind of nice. Then stepping into the rear seats, again, we've got dimpling, our pattern, our yellow, all that stuff that we're used to. And we've got a nice flat floor for the most part, huge amounts of space, we'll get in in a second. Headroom is good. Again, it'd be nice to have a little bit more light coming into this black cabin, but generally speaking, it's pretty good. Again, same materials that you can wash down, really, really nice, especially if you're gonna put storage in, or put stuff in here for storage. You can lift up the rear seats to have access to your jack, as well as a little bit more storage. And then, one of my favorite things from GMs, is you got a little hidden contraband compartment in the seat backs, which is pretty cool. You do have this grab handle here, which makes sense, but then that leaves, that leaves the shirt hanger lonely at the top of the roof by itself. But I'm 6'1", great knee room. We've got heated seats back here, USB-C, USB-A, vents, cup holders, and some more. And if you were wondering about assembly, which no one's ever asked for, but I thought this was interesting, 38% of the parts are from Mexico on this truck, and the final assembly point is in Mexico, which officially makes the Toyota Tundra a more American truck than this Chevrolet Silverado. And the last thing we'll talk about is price. Now, as starting, a ZR2 Silverado will start at about $71,500. The Bison package, like we talked about, adding all that protection and some cosmetic stuff, adds $8,000. And as tested, this is an $85,000 truck. And to me personally, it's just a bit too much, especially because that puts it firmly and squarely deep into Raptor money territory. And the Raptor is a bit crazier. And again, it's a totally different purpose, but I can't help but make the comparison. So those are the 30 most interesting things about the Silverado ZR2 Bison. Throughout the video, you could tell that I like this truck. It's just not quite as crazy, not quite as unhinged as something like a Raptor or a TRX. And the only problem with that is the fact that it is Raptor money. But aside from that, this is a very good truck. So stay tuned for our full in-depth thoughts next week about the ZR2 Bison. Thanks for watching. We'll see you then.